Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here. It is February 4th, the Empyrean Foundation has begun, we've got a new boss to fight in the Sundial, and you've got a way to burn through weapon frame bounties faster than you ever want to, but you're actually going to want to wait two weeks before you do that, so let me break it all down for you in this week of Destiny 2. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to want to go to the tower, talk to Saint-14, and he's going to give you a new quest. It's going to tell you you need to go to the Sundial and beat a new boss named Enotom. He's actually pretty cool. Pick up a couple bounties in the tower, you know, Saint-14 bounties, Obelisk bounties. May as well have those with you as you go play through the game. But when you go into the Sundial, the first part's going to be similar. You're either going to go to the past, the present, the future, get your progress bar farther and farther along. But when you finish that and you get ready to go fight a boss, it's actually going to teleport you to a completely different room. Looks really cool, we're kind of back in the corridors of time, and you're going to be fighting kind of the Megazord of the Scions. So you're going to see the Arc, Solar, and Void Scions kind of like meld together to make one big Super Scion. He's cool. He also has the ability to do all their abilities. So he's going to have the Void kind of trapping bubbles that you have to shoot. He's going to have the electric lightning that comes down. He's also going to have these like solar rockets that fly out. So he's got the abilities of all three Scions. And you actually have to fight him, Big Super Scion, while everything else is going on. So it's a pretty cool fight. I'm just happy we got a unique boss fight. Because it's not Vex Offensive. It's not just a different boss in the exact same map. Yeah, you do the activity the same, but the boss in the end is cool. Once you beat Enotom the first time, and it doesn't have to be on Legend. It can be on Normal Difficulty. You're going to get the core of the Sundial. Now, once you have that thing on you, make sure... Again, remember, go back to the beginning part of the sundial, pick up your weapons, and you'll notice, actually, at least I did, I had five weapon pulls that I could do instead of my normal four. Usually, it was one from sundial, I got two extra unlocks of weapons from the obelisks themselves, and I got another obelisk, or another weapon pull from the season pass. I had four, this time I have five, and there's a little bit of flavor text throughout this quest if you read, there is a tease of another obelisk somewhere, and I think this is kind of leading into what's going to happen next season. So, anyway, just make sure you pick up your weapon frames, or your weapons rolls, and trying to get those god rolls, obviously. Math is working against you, but if you do get a good god roll, congratulations. You're going to get a lot of chances at them coming up as well. So once you're done getting your weapons, you're going to head back to orbit and notice the quest tells you we need to gather 30 orbs of light. Now, gathering orbs of light overall isn't that difficult, but if you want to be as efficient as possible at it, take a masterworked weapon with you. Now, me, I've got a couple different masterworks. Uh, anything like, say, Randy's Throwing Knife, it comes to you as Masterworked. But I've also got my Go Figure that I've been using for Eons, which I love. Um, anything you've got that's a Masterwork is going to be very good to kill a lot of enemies for one and then drop those orbs quickly. Yes, you could pop a super, kill some enemies, but you're actually not able to pick up your own orbs that are generated from a super. So you're going to want to do this with some type of Masterwork. Even the Buzzard, still going to work. Anything you've got that is Masterworked will count. Now, once you got your weapon of choice, it's really up to you and where you want to farm these uh, orbs of light. One easy one that I do tend to like to use is right here on Mars, the core terminus. It's a lost sector. We've got, you know, no competition of fighting anybody else. A lot of enemies in there, a lot of Thrall that you can kill quickly. Thrall die really fast, though. So if you are killing Thrall, make sure you give a little break for, like, the orb of light to be generated for every pair. Because if I kill, like, four and, like, one or two trigger pulls, I'm only going to get, like, one orb of light. Kill two, give it, a, give it a second. Kill another two, give it a second. Just space out your timing a little bit, and you'll actually get an orb for every two enemies that you kill. So just try and be as efficient with that as possible. Something like Escalation Protocol can be really easy. A public event is also going to be another way to do it. Where you've just got a lot of enemies to kill. However you do it. And again, public events aren't bad because you actually have other Guardians around. They might be making orbs too. You can just run around and share, pop supers. Then you can actually help each other that way. Either way, you just need to gather 30 orbs. Now just remember, if you pick up like 20 orbs, your super bar is probably going to be full. And when it's full, you cannot pick up orbs anymore. Unless you're, of course, holding Windigo, which actually picks up extra orbs. But you may not have that. So if you don't have Windigo, make sure you pop your super. Use that and try not to kill the enemies because you're trying to kill those for to create orbs, not actually you kill them with your super. So I was doing something like with my Titan, use a bubble. With a hunter, you could pop your golden gun, fire it six times into a wall and be done with that. Something to use up that super so as you continue to kill enemies, you're able to pick up those orbs quickly and knock this part of the step out. Once you're done picking up these 30 orbs of light and you've got this thing charged up, we're going to head back to the tower. Now, once you are back in the tower, you're going to see that you can go up to the tower obelisk, and we're going to put this charged core of the sundial into the tower obelisk 
to basically start the building of this Empyrean Foundation beacon, which is what this whole community effort is all about. Now, here is where it's going to say, generate polarized fractal line. And you're like, cool, I can get my polarized fractal line. I'm going to pick up my 7,500. But wait. And you're going, are you serious? Yes, I am. What you can actually do is if you don't pick that up yet, when you go to basically generate that polarized fractal line, if you go to the other planets, if you do other activities, you finish some bounties, um, you use some of that currency and you get some of your crucible matches or strikes or gambit matches to drop you some more polarized fractal line. If you level up your obelisks on the other planets a little bit more from bounties, say you're going to, you know, play a decent amount today, try not to generate that polarized fractal line yet. Do some bounties, turn those into the planets, and you're actually going to pick up more and kind of be a little bit ahead of your investment that you actually thought. So it's up to you if you want to wait. I actually went ahead and picked mine up because I didn't know about that at the time. I still did get my 7,500 polarized fractal line, which is a lot, which is a good thing. But what I'm going to do is take that 7,500, go put it into, into the other planetary obelisks and keep investing. If you guys haven't seen my other video or the pictures that I posted, you want to take any polarized fractal line that you get now through February 17th and put that into one of the planetary obelisks. Tangled Shore, Mars, EDZ, or Nessus, doesn't matter which one. They don't max out. I saw somebody had one up to level 420 because it was the guy who had like 100,000 100, polarized fractal line because that guy is crazy in an awesome way, but ridiculous. But yeah, there's no maxing out an obelisk. You can take it over 99, not a problem. So however much polarized fractal line you have, put that into the planetary obelisks this week and next week. Then on the 18th, any polarized fractal line that you get, now we can start donating it to the Empyrean Foundation community effort in the tower by depositing it into the tower. But by waiting that long, instead of picking up 7,500 from the tower obelisk this week, in two weeks, if I go invest it in the planets, when I come back to the tower on the 18th, I'm going to pick up 16,000 uh, polarized fractal line, which is a crazy number. And I'm going to be able to pick that up on the week of the 18th week of the 25th, and then the week of March 3rd. These last three weeks of the season, I'm going to be able to get a lot of polarized fractal line just from the tower itself, much less any bounties or anything else that I do. Now, just to make note, if you are at the point where you're like, hey, I've got to travel for the next month, i got to knock this stuff out now, here's a point of thing to remember. You do want to make sure you donate 5,000 polarized fractal line to this. It's important because that's going to get you your triumph. And that's also going to allow you to kind of check any boxes that you need for the season should get you everything done. As you donate to the tower, one thing to remember, you'll notice the Empyrean donation is only 100 polarized fractal line. And they state every 100 that you donate, they said this on the Bungie blog, and we discussed it last week, is going to be 25% of any time loss bounty across the board. Now, I can hold how many of these things? Here, I'll pick up two more just so you guys can see it. I got two more. My time loss limit is four weapon frames. So currently, I have a few. And you'll notice I have two over here, two over here. And there's something to be stated that Perfect Paradox is a little bit glitched. That you can hold more Perfect Paradox bounties than it seems any other weapon. Now I'm doing this right now just to see. Okay, now I'm at like six. So I don't know why Perfect Paradox seems to hold more. Maybe it's just a little glitched. But I have six weapon frames right now that I can actually work on at the same time. Normally, it's supposed to be four to my understanding. So I think Perfect Paradox is a little off. But it is a good shotgun. So if you get a good roll on it, you know, it's not a bad thing to go for that god roll. But I've also got a patron of Lost Causes down here. So I've got six weapon frames. One at 99%. That'll finish pretty easy. This one's at 53%. That one I should get some progress on. And all of these are at zero. Now watch. When I go back here and I donate 100 polarized fractal line. Just 100. Takes a little while. I hope they speed that up at some point. I finished my Patreon of the Lost Classes because it was at 99%. That's not hard to do. But this one's at 26%. This one's at 26 This one's at 25 This one's at 26 There's some weird rounding going on. This one's at 78%. And this one is done. So however many bounties that you can hold, you know, if pay Perfect Paradox is glitched for some reason, but even if you're working on the Breach Light or the Mar Marty's Retribution or Steel Feather Repeater, whatever you have for bounties, every 100 that you turn in is going to give you 25% progress. So I wanted to show you guys this actually live in action to remember, every time you turn in 400 Fractaline, you will finish every time loss bounty that you have 
go make sure you go into your inventory, go pick up that gun, go see if you got a good roll, pick up more bounties, and then do it again. Now, the nice thing about the time loss bounties, they're cheap. So as I told you guys, I was going to be able to get 50,000 roughly fractaline. Well, the bounties are like 10 fractaline. So maybe I turned in 48,000 and I'm still able to, you know, get a lot of fractaline donated, but I'm able to also go through like 200 bounties. Now, if you guys do the math, I'm able to hold four bounties at a time. I'm also able to turn in four at a time. So every time I turn it, pick up four and turn in four, it's going to be able to be 400 fractaline. Say I have 48,000 fractaline that I can turn in total, and then I've got 400 per run. So that's 120 times that I turn in that 400 fractaline, and then if I can hold four bounties, excuse me, that's 480 weapon frames that I can go through by sitting here in the tower, not having to do a whole lot, and getting a really high chance at that god roll. So this is the final piece. If you also want to use your Glimmer now, in these first two weeks, and you're able to get it back up, because the bounties do cost 3,000, but this thing costs 20,000, this itself will also level up any planetary obelisk by a level. So you don't have to spend any polarized fractaline to level up an obelisk. You're going to get more, because your resonance power is going to go up for each one of these, and it's only 10 legendary shards. Now, if you're a new player and you don't have that many, that's okay. Maybe this is not the thing for you. But if you do have a decent amount of Glimmer, you're playing the game a lot, you're getting your Glimmer back, and you've got a crap ton of Legendary Shards like I do, you can actually buy quite a few of these, bump up your Planetary Obelisk, and your Resonance Power is going to be even higher. So I know this is a little long-winded, wanted to cover a couple of pieces for you guys, but I also wanted to show you guys how everything's going to work, how the weapon frames are going to work, how the donation is going to work. Don't forget to buy these Fractaline Skimmers, they're pretty cheap, and they're going to give you a chance at that extra Fractaline as you're playing through doing other activities. But if you get to the point, if you don't watch any other video from me, and you get to the point where you start donating Fractaline, make sure you pick up as many of these bounties as possible. And again, if you run out of Glimmer, go talk to Spider. He's going to be doing Glimmer exchanges like a crazy person for about the next four weeks. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is the Empyrean Foundation, basically in a nutshell. For the Triumphs, you are going to need to donate a total of 5,000 to be able to get the emblem. The community effort, we don't know the final tally, but it could be near 10 billion. But, I mean, if ev if 2 million Guardians donate 5,000, that's 10 billion. So they had question marks out there we don't entirely know, but I'll be curious to see how this thing progresses. But, again, do not donate until the to the tower until the 18th. Put all the Fractaline you get for the next two weeks into the planets. Invest now and profit later. Thank you guys very much. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.